Okay, so um, this uh, we're going to actually use this model from Keras. Okay, we're gonna use it from Keras. So if you go to um, Keras documentation, right? So if you come here, um, they have actually described it over here, right? So you can also come here and then um, go through step by step, right? But let's let's have, I mean, the intuition behind that, okay? And then uh, you can just further read it by yourself okay so um we're going to use a data set over here you can click on this link to go and see the data set that we're going to use okay so it's a language translation that we're going to do and this one is going to be um english to french or french to english right if you like all right so um it's this one let's see let's see this okay french to english so click on that one if you click on that um it's going to download and then you can unzip it Okay, and then let me just open it for you to see uh, what is inside. All right, so here you can see that we have several um, words of it there, right? We have Go, the translation is there. We have um, Go, another translation, right? Go, so it has three different translations in there, okay? And then we have um, Hi, right? Each translation is there. We have Run, 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 each translation is there, so on and so forth, okay? Um, uh, this part is not that important this one is we don't really need that part okay so we will get rid of that one uh, what we need is the word and then their respective translations okay that's what we're gonna use going forward all right so um let's um see how it is done over here all right so uh we're going to download that straight away from the link that i just showed you okay so the link is here right so if you run this one it's just going to download it for you you should be able to see it over here. If you don't see it, you can just click on refresh and then you'll be seeing it. See that you download the same file that we downloaded and then it will unzip it and then you have it, okay? The same file, okay? You see that the file name fra.txt, right? That's that's it, fra.txt. So that's what we're going to use, all right? So here we just set in some configuration over here. That is the batch size that we're gonna use, the epochs, the latent dimension, right? which is the dimensionality of the encoding space and the number of uh, samples here we're going to use 10,000 samples okay and the path of course is this okay that's the path all right so let's let's start by preparing the data set and see how it goes so we have um i mean we have previously gotten to understand how encoder and the decoder works all right so let's let's see how we're going to do it so we first need to set um so we need to first create the vectorized data, right? So we have our input test and then the target test, okay? And then the input characters and then the target characters. So the input text are gonna be the input that we're gonna feed to our encoder. And then the target is gonna be what we're gonna get out of the decoder, all right? So that's basically what we are setting over here, right? And then there are respective characters, right? We want unique characters, so we put set over there, right? And then we're going to open the file right and then read it line by line all right read it line by line and then we're going to split it as we read it okay we split it based on um the next line this forward slash and means next line so once we got to the next line we split it okay for instance this one here there's a whole space here and then it goes to the next line so once we read it we go to the next line like that all right then um all right so once we do that we're also going to add um we're going to we're going to add tab at the beginning and then tab at the end okay because if you are reading the test right we need to make sure that okay when we read the first one right the space we we put in space here first space over here right something like this we make sure that there's a space here and also there's a four slash um n right at the end here so that we know that okay once we read this one right once there's a space here we know that we are going to read something and one there's a forward slash here we know that we are finished reading this in the same way this one too there will be some space over there there will be some forward slash n over there okay that's how we are doing it in order to know that we are finished reading one uh, word and we are supposed to read the next and so on and so forth okay so that's basically what you are doing so we are adding that one to our um i mean our test because it's, it's not there okay so we are adding that one and then once we do that we are going to add them to I mean the empty test that I mean empty set that we have right input test and target test respectively okay and then um, also the characters we're going to add the individual characters to 
the input characters and the target characters. Okay, so that's basically what we are doing um, over here, right? Then, uh, so let me, um, I've not run this one, I'll run this one, so let me run this one. Okay, and then let me run this one. All right, so once that is done, uh, what we're gonna do is that we're going to create the input characters, the target characters, right? And this, uh, what we are doing is that we're just sorting them, okay? Whatever that we have put into the input test, so we're going to sort them over there, right? So input um, sorted equals list input characters, right? Because we have our input characters, right? So we're going to sort them respectively, right? And then we store them in input characters and target characters, okay? So that's basically what you're doing over here. All right, so once um, that part is done, then we're going to have uh, the number of encoder tokens, okay? We're going to see how many encoder tokens do we have. And I mean, in tokens, as we saw earlier on, just the number of words that we have, okay? So, I mean, you can see number of samples, we say that we're gonna use 10,000, okay? Number of samples is gonna be 10,000. And then the number of um, unique input tokens for this one is for the English okay for the English test it's going to be 71 right and for the French is going to be um, 93 okay the French is going to be the output right and then the English is going to be the input okay so that's basically what is going to happen all right we have the English to be the input the French to be the output all right and then the maximum sequence length for input okay that's the maximum length or uh, length of sentence that we have for the English sentence and then the maximum length of words that we have for the uh, French okay so you can see that the French ones are longer the English ones are a bit shorter All right so that's basically what we are um, finding out over here we are storing them respectively okay all right so once we do that um, let me run uh, let me run this one and then run this one okay fine now here what we're trying to do is to find the input tokens okay so input token index is equal to um the input characters okay we are finding enumerate which is going to give us the index and the respective characters okay we are putting them in the form of a dictionary which is going to be the character and the respective index okay let me run this one and show you how it looks like all right so um for instance let me get rid of this one and then let me run it Okay, so this is how it looks like. So we have the respective, I mean, I mean, characters, okay, and then the index that it appears. So um, space, it appears at index zero, um, exclamation mark appears at index one, right? Quote appears at index two, um, the dollar sign appears at index three, and so on and so forth. Okay, you can just go through all of them, okay? P appears at index 59, Q appears at index um 60 r appears as in index um 61 s appears at index 62 and so on and so forth right so that's for the input target right if you, you can also do the same thing for the um i mean the target token index okay so if i oh come on i wanted to yeah that's that's fine actually so if you see what we have right so let's go right so here you can see that this is the target okay this is the target and we have the respective index as well so that's basically what you are creating right all right so now we're going to um see the encoder and the decoder right since we have already created the architecture right and now what we do we are trying to do is to set up the parameters okay encoder input data and then the a decoder input data and the decoder target data right so the encoder we we only have encoder input data because here we are not getting any output okay so uh, we have encoder input data but we also have um i mean decoder input data and the de decoder target data or output data okay so that's basically what we are setting up over here right you can refer to the blog right the link is here which is this blog okay is the description is right here of all the things that you're supposed to do right and things that you're supposed to add right from one to three if you read that you will see all the input that you're supposed to give all right all right so basically that's what we have over here then uh here we are setting a one hot encoder representation for i mean all the data points that we have okay 
that's basically what you're doing here um this one you can you don't really need to worry yourself about this particular code right you can just use the i mean the keras one hot encoder to do the same thing right without writing all these um long code okay you can just do that right you can even refer to this i've given you a link here right if you want to refer to how to do that you can just go to this link over here okay if you go here and write how to one hot encode sequence data right the code is right here it's quite simple right so, um as compared to what what i mean keras did okay as compared to what keras did so you can replace this code with that okay whatever i mean what is going on here is to just one hot encode the data points okay so you can just ignore that part and then use whatever i mean i've given you here right but i mean this one also works fine right this one although it's just a lot of um lines over here but it, it works also fine but you can also use the one that we have been using earlier on to do our hot encoding okay so you can just refer to that blog all right okay so the next one is to just build the i mean build the model right so for that we're going to use keras or keras input and then we are giving the, I mean, the encoder input shape over here, which is going to contain the number of encoder tokens. Okay. You remember we have this um, number of encoder tokens. We specify this one above here. Um, if we go all the way up right here, we have, the, we have them over here. All right. So the number of encoder um, tokens, we got them to be this, right? Um, for the English, we have the unique input tokens to be 71 the number of unique output tokens to be 93 okay so that's basically what we have uh we are using over here right and then we are going to use lstm right lstm over here right and then we need to specify the latent dimension right basically in the timestamp okay so we have um over here we're gonna have timestamp one timestamp two three four five and so on and so forth depending on the number of um words that we have okay so that's basically what we are setting up over there. And then here, um, we're going to, the last one over here is quite important. Okay, the last step over here, right? If you realize um, here, we are not getting any output, right? We are not getting any output. What we are trying to find is the context vector. Okay, which is gonna be the last output over here. Here, we are not getting any output. Unlike the decoder part where we get output for each of the um, LSTMs here, we are not getting the output. Okay, we keep on moving on until we get the last contest vector. Okay, so what we are trying to do here is that here, if we do encoder, then the we get the encoder inputs. Okay, if we get the encoder inputs, right, these encoder inputs that we're going to put over there, which is the words that we're going to put over there. All right, we're going to come up with, uh, we, will, we will get the encoder output the hidden state, right? The hidden state and also the cell state, right? But since we don't want the encoder output, right? We are ignoring the encoder output. We're gonna pick only the state, the hidden state and then the cell state. Okay, that's what we are doing, All right? And that will become the encoder state. Okay, that's the only thing that we're gonna use. We, we are not going to use the output in this state. I mean, in this um, encoder part, okay? Um, for the decoder part, we're going to get the I mean, we're going to also use Keras input, right? So we just the same code over here, right? Keras input, number of tokens, the same thing, right? But in this case, we need the output, okay? The decoder outputs, okay? When we are not concerned with the, I mean, the states, right? The hidden state and the um, the cell states, we are concerned about the outputs that we're gonna get. So it's just kind of a reverse part of, I mean, the, I mean, the opposite to the, the, to the I mean, the encoder, okay? For the decoder, we get we are concerned about the um, the decoder output, right? But for the encoder, we are concerned about the state, the hidden state, and the cell state. Just, that is going to give us the context vector, right? To be able to get this decoder output, okay? Just like we have it here, okay? We only did need the context vector to get the decoder output. So that is basically what is happening over here. So once we do that. Then we add a dense layer, okay? We add a dense layer over here with activation of softmax, okay? And then the number of decoder tokens, all right, respectively. All right, and then here we get all the decoder output, okay? We get the decoder output, okay? So that's basically what we have. And then um, we define our model over here, right? Which is going to turn the encoder input data and the decoder input data into decoder um, target data, 
okay it's going to turn the encoder input data and the decoder input data into the decoder target data okay so that's basically what we are doing that's the final um stage over here then finally we're going to train the model right compare to optimizer rms prop uh, categorical cross entropy to be the laws matrix to accuracy all these things are things that we know and then we fit it right um i mean okay i'm doing 100 epochs okay i'm doing 100 epochs so you can see it's quite it's gonna take quite a lot of i mean time about three minutes about 15 minutes or so okay it's gonna take about 15 minutes to run this so that's why i've already run and i'm not running it again okay all right now um there's there's some parts that i want you to also do right i want you to review the code right this code just review it and then you're going to write um i mean be, pair your understanding of the code right you're going to write a review report okay okay you're going to write a review report and you submit it for me to review of your understanding right we can refer to the documentation which i've given you over here okay if you need any other additional understanding you can refer to it okay and then see whatever how you can make a sense out of it okay but it's there everything is there i've given you let me even give you a highlight of what is going on over here okay so um here we have we are defining the sample models over here okay remember that we we saved the model right here we saved the model as um s to s that is sequence to sequence you can name it the way that you want maybe um sec right sec to sec if you want to make it more intuitive okay here i just i just name it as s to s just simple and then i'm reloading it over here right i'm reloading in fact you're supposed to just read and understand but i'm just giving you a highlight so you can see that keras underscore read model so here what you do is that here you just write here read or maybe reading um saved model okay so the model that we saved we are reading it so reading saved model so you write it over see this is how you're going to write it and submit it okay and then here whatever that you are making up uh, from here okay so here i mean let me just give you highlights of it. i don't want to spoon feed you but um just giving you a small highlight or tips so that you can just go so this part is actually we have the input okay we have the input so model dot input and then we are picking the the first input is going to be here the second input is going to be here right this one is going to be the encoder input right and then this one is going to be the decoder input over here right and then this here is going to be the um the decoder layers right i mean this is i think you can just go you can just figure these things out okay this is simple right you can just um sit down and then go through it right if you need extra resources i said you can go through this one right so you submit i'll give you the comments if your reviews are good or not right I'll, I'll, I'll give you the feedback okay so just go through respectively right so finally you can run this part okay if uh, if you run this code if you run this code um you can now run this part and then you'll be able to get the output okay you'll be able to get the um the sentence translations respectively so I don't want to spoon feed you because it becomes if it becomes part of you it becomes difficult for you to do it by yourself and figure things out okay you need to be independent and then um because at the normal circumstance i'm not going to be there to do everything for you okay you need to also learn how to i mean figure things by yourself because that's how it is these things are not straightforward you're always going to figure things by yourself so i mean spend time to do this all right I mean the code is already there you just have to spend time to understand it there are a lot of resources online that can help you do that all right so i mean the respective translations are there you can use google translate to check if it is doing well or not okay so this uh, va you can see that it's translating well for us right if you check hi it's supposed to translate to salute in in um, or maybe if you check it from french to english it's supposed to translate salute to hi okay respectively so if you do that you see that is there okay so i mean it is working very fine so you can just check it and see and then you give the i mean your report okay you just submit your report so that's that's basically the end of it all right so i hope um you, you i hope you you get your head around this one so make sure you submit your assignment for me to review for you all right so um see you in the next tutorial have a nice day